ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਸੋ ਫਸਟ ਆਲ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਟੂ ਬੈਂਜੀ ਦਾ ਜਥਾ ਫਾਰ ਦਾ ਲਵਲੀ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਸਿਮਰ ਟੂ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਵਿਦ ਇਟਸ ਰੀਲੀ ਬਿਊਟੀਫੁਲ ਐਂਡ ਆਲਸੋ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਟੂ ਦਾ ਸੰਗਤ ਫਾਰ ਕਮਿੰਗ ਫਾਰ ਦਾ ਕਥਾ ਨਾਉ ਫਾਰ ਦਾ ਜਪਚੀ ਸਾਬ ਕੋਰਸ ਐਸ ਵੈਲ ਸੋ ਥਿਸ ਇਸ ਦਾ ਫੋਰਥ ਵੀਕ ਆਫ ਦਾ ਜਪਚੀ ਸਾਬ ਕੋਰਸ ਵੀ ਸਟਾਰਟਡ ਥਿਸ ਔਨ ਦਾ ਫਰਸਟ ਆਫ ਜਨਵਰੀ ਐਂਡ ਇਟ ਵਾਸ ਕਾਈਂਡ ਆਫ ਅ ਬਿਗ ਅਨਾਉਂਸਮੈਂਟ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਫੋਰ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਸਪੀਕਰਸ ਆਈ ਵੈਡ ਰੋਮ ਵੀ ਸਿੰਗ ਟੂ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਵਿਦ and then after them on preet singh guru charan singh and now we got simon kaur this week so um this is at the end of the the four speakers and it's the cycle starts again in the respect as also as guru kirpa so um just a few beanti uh it's lovely that kids are here as all benji uh, as long as she can just um stay a bit quiet or just please take her to the back or just stand aside and come back in uh, so there's um everyone can concentrate in mari hazuri uh What's very special this week is Guru Sahib Prakash or the other weeks they done Maharaj Jisu Khas in the Seva already um so this week we be doing Maharaj Jisu Seva ourselves um and hopefully this week the Bibi be doing the Seva as well which is nice uh, so got them doing Kirtan doing the Ardas so Khasan so Hela side the part as well so it's just nice to um have everybody involved in the Seva if anybody from the Bibi side all the things are anyway from to do chores side the Seva then you can just make sure if you have an case you should if you have a full bath your clothes not clean then just try and do next week you can also send the seva does how to do the seva but i did speak to a few people so please do you know take out from benjis or if you need to have the seva if any questions just speak to on god single origin sing on the side uh, in the yellow hoodies um but i'll finish off there i'll pass over to simon god uh, for the presentation and uh guru ke kripa karan that we all learn so we take something away why guru ji ka khalsa Wai Guru Ji Ki Fateh. Wai Guru Ji Ka Khalsa. Wai Guru Ji Ki Fateh. Um, so if we can start first with Mood Mantra like we do every week. So if I can ask everyone to just close your eyes. And then we'll get into the talk. Ek Oankar Sat Naam Karta Purkh Nirbao Nirvair Akal Murat ਅਜੁਨੀ ਸੈ ਪੰਗੁਰ ਪ੍ਰਸਾਦ ਜਪ ਆਦ ਸਚ ਜੁਗਾਦ ਸਚ ਹੈ ਪੀ ਸਚ ਨਾਨਕ ਹੋਸੀ ਆਦ ਸਚ ਜੁਗਾਦ ਸਚ ਹੈ ਪੀ ਸਚ ਨਾਨਕ ਹੋਸੀ ਪੀ ਸਚ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ So we are the fourth speaker and I think everyone's had the saying last but not least. Yeah? Has everyone heard that yet? Yeah? But that does not apply here. It's last and very much the least. <laughs> um so just another disclaimer while we while we're here. Um I am fortunate enough to be from up north from Birmingham. So my accent does does differ as I've been told by especially Sukhdeep Singh, Sukhdeep Singh's friends, Rohan Vish Singh likes to bring it up quite a lot to be honest. Um so if my pronunciation is a little bit different then please you can raise your hand and we have got translators on hand to come over and translate what I'm saying um and clear up the, the pronunciation. Um, um the course so um we saw this last week the QR code if you scan it you'll be added into the group. um just to keep you updated with what's happening in terms of um the job to side course just media and updates and things like that um okay so if we do a quick recap of what we've covered so far uh week 1 by rohan veer singh uh the greatness of city job to sahib so by sahib took us through some context of city job to sahib that it's a discussion between guru nanak dev ji maharaj and the sids that job to sahib is our spiritual breakfast and also by rohan veer singh took us through some sakhiya of the greatness of japji sahib the pa- to show us how powerful japji sahib is so before we go through week 2 and 3 just a quick sakhi again relating to how powerful and how great sri japji sahib is um so this godara sahib here is a godara sahib in india does anyone know which godara sahib this is anyone Nope. Yeah, it's Muktar Sahib. So, in the vicinity, there's five Godwara Sahibs, and this one here is named Godwara Si Tutti Gandhi Sahib. And um, what's anyone that's come to the the Wai Guru course and that's been attending the Wai Guru course, 
Sukhdeep Singh, two weeks ago, went through the Saki of Muksar Saib and the Chali Mukti and what happened there. So in summary, after six, seven, eight months of hardship, hunger and starvation, the, there were 660 things that left Guru Gobind Singh from Anandpur Saib and returned home. And returning home out of those 40 things, 40, 40 returned out of those 660 things, one of which was by Maha Singh, and they fought the battle here of Muktsar and protected Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj. And Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj's bhajan, what they've said is that normally if a saint passes away somewhere, that often a, a sthan, a god Sahib is made in their memory. And they said that on this land, on this soil, my 40 beloved Sikhs, good Sikhs, passed away. And the, the 40 of them were cremated, where Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj cremated them themselves. And that's why Maharaji renamed this town from Kidrana to Muktsar Sahib. And Maharaji said that here a big Jor Mela will take place. A Jor Mela is like a big, a big gathering in memory of the Jali Mukti. And what the Sangat said to Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj was that Maharaji, because of the heat and because of the lack of water in this area, it would be very difficult to hold um, a Jor Mela, a gathering. And what Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj said was, we will hold this mela, we will hold this gathering in a month where water is not required. So though the, the Battle of Muksar took place in Vasaki, which is normally April, the mela takes place in, in the month of Marg, which is what we're currently in now. So that's mid-January to um, mid-February. So it's a month in the Sikh calendar known as Marg. And Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj said, that that Sikh, that person that bathes on the on Magi Wala then, so the first day of the month of Mag, and submerges himself into the water and reads one Japji Sabda Bhat while sitting in the water, that they will be liberated, they will be freed, which shows the power of Sri Japji Sahib. And Guru Gobind Singh Ji Maharaj also said that on this Magi Wala then, the first day of Mag, if a bird is to fly over the Godra Sahib, this Asthan, then that bird will also be freed. So Pai Rohanvir Singh and Sukhdeep Singh today went through Boli Sahib, how there's 84 steps and if you do Japji Sahib on the 84 steps that you will be liberated. So this is just another example to show that if you do Japji Sahib in a certain place and in a certain way that you can be liberated. So back to the recap, uh, week two, it was by Preet Singh that went through the Mool Mantar from Ik Oankar to Nanakosi B such. And then last week we had Bai Gurjanan Singh go through the belly body of Sidi Jopji Sahib. So as mentioned by the previous speakers, Sidi Jopji Sahib is a conversation between the Sids and our first Guru, Satguru Sidi Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj. And, <clears throat> and Maharaji explains in the first body of Sidi Jopji Sahib that through these Jar Sadhan, these four ritualistic actions that God cannot be found. So this is what we covered last week. Uh, can anyone remember what those four ritualistic actions were that we went through last week? Yep, yeah, silence, yeah. Barney the Moon, thus are not speaking. Nahal Singh. Starving, yeah, so fasting, so vartrakhani, so not eating. So that was two of the four. The other two? Benji? Bathing, yeah. So in the first line, so chess, so janahovi, that bathing and purifying the body, that will not that will not get us closer to meeting God. And the last one? Intelligence. So intelligence, knowledge, cleverness, tricks, right? So... So that this the bathing will not get you closer to Vaiguruji. Um and then we've got the not speaking, the hunger, and Sesyan the, the tricks and the clevernesses. And one example of this is when the, the SIDS could control their breathing. So when we're born, we're born with a certain number of breaths, and when we come to the end of those breaths, we die, we pass away. And the SIDS realized this and what they could do, instead of, instead of breathing one whole breath, they could breathe a half a breath. So they had these half breaths and in turn, they basically doubled their lifespan, right? So a lot of these SIDS were hundreds and hundreds of years old. 
But Guru Sahib Ji said that actually through these tricks, this cleverness, this intelligence, that you cannot, you cannot meet Vai Guru. Then the Sids asked the first question in Sri Japji Sahib, which was, Give Sachiara Hoye, Give Kure Tutte Pal. Then uh, Guru Sahib Ji, how can, we, how can we become true? And true in the sense of how can we become this true, true form of Vai Guruji? Give a Kure Tutte Pal, and how can we break this veil of falsehood? which we spoke about last week as being our ego. And then Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj replied, Hukam Rajai Chalana Nanak Likhya Naal. That if we walk this path of Hukam, this um, this path of Hukam, then that way we will be able to meet Vai Guruji. Which brings us very nicely to te today's talk. Because after, after Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj said this, the Sids asked another question to Guru Sahib. And they said that this, this Hukam that you speak of, Ke Hukam ki hai, te kitna ko vadda hai. Right? So, in simple terms, what is this hukam? And then Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj, in the second body of Siddhi Japji Sahib, explain what hukam is. Before we go into the actual body, what is hukam? Does anyone have any idea of what, what hukam might be? Yeah. Command, yeah? Command, as you say in Birmingham. Anything else? Yeah, so reality, yeah? Yeah. yeah? yeah, so very simply we can say that hukam is God's will. And there's lots of different words we can use um, to, to define hukam. So God's will, Vaiguruji's law, their order, their command, their command, right? Um, all these words can be used to define why, what Vaiguruji's hukam is. And then this question always comes up, right? That hukam versus free will. Can both exist? So, Sangaji, can hukam and free will coexist? Can anyone have a jab at that question? What are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so both can kind of coexist. Anyone else? Anyone else's views on this topic? Yeah. Ooh, that's a good one. So if you're living by Hukum, um, and said that if you're living by hukum, you're making that choice, right? That you are that you want to live by hukum, so that is your free will, right? Okay, um, so we will pick this back up towards the end of the discussion and we'll see what Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj's answer is to this to this question. Okay, so if we dive into the first line um, where Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj says, Hukumi hovan akar, hukum na kahea jai. That hukumi, Vai Guruji's command, hovan, created, akar, creation. So very simply, Vai Guruji's command created creation. Hukam na kahe ajai that Vai Guruji's command na cannot kahe ajai be described. Again, very simply that Vai Guruji's command cannot be described, right? So I'm not sure why I'm here trying to describe it. I should really just drop the mic and walk out, but hey-ho, we can continue. Um, so if we, what, how we can relate Hukam na kahe ajai is when Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj went to Makkah also known as Mecca. So Pai Mardana Ji said to Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj that Maharaj Ji, I've heard so many, so many great things about Mecca and I've heard that Muslims believe it to be the, the home of God. So I, I really want to see it, it's my desire, it's my wish. Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj accepted this, accepted their humble request and they went to, to, they went to Mecca. And when they arrived there, um, into the vicinity near the, the Kaaba, this black building, it was quite dark, it was quite late, so both um, Guru Sahib Ji and Pai Mardana Ji went to sleep. And in the morning, uh, Akkad Ji, a Muslim priest, came sweeping, came cleaning, and saw that Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj had their, their jar and their feet towards Gabba, to, towards the, the black building. And they came over to Guru Sahib Ji and said, why do you have your feet facing towards God? And Guru Nanak Dev Ji's answer was, well, I, I did not do this on purpose, 
I don't know in which direction God is. I don't know in which in di which direction God isn't. So please move my feet into that di direction where they do not face God. And quite annoyed, quite quite angry, the Gaji threw Gunan Devji's feet into a different direction. And as they did this, the Gaba moved into the same direction. And every time they would move Guru Sahib Ji's feet, the Gaba would move into the same direction. And Gunan Devji's teaching here was that actually God is everywhere, right? And then the Gaji and a, a lot of other Sangat in the vicinity fell to Guru Nanak Dev Ji's feet after realizing what, you know, what Guru Sahib Ji was saying. And there was much discussion um, between Guru Sahib Ji and the Sangat and many questions, one of which was similar to what the Sids asked, that what is Hukam, right? What is Hukam and how big is Hukam? And Guru Nanak Dev Ji said, Hukam na kahiya jai, that Hukam cannot be described. And the... The Gaji then said quite cleverly that Maharaj, certain things you can't describe by talking, by speaking of it. But those things can sometimes be described if you write them down. So please, can you write down what Hukam is and explain it in that way? And then Gunan Devji Maharaj, which are in this Shabad, Tera Hukam na japi ke tera likh na jane koi, je so sair me liye hai tel na puja vheroi. That, that hukam, right, the size, the extent of Vaiguruji's hukam, it cannot be described. Likna jane koi, and no one, right, no one can write it down. Je so sair me liye hai tel na puja vihroi. Then Maharaji give an example. That je so sair me liye hai, that if you got so, meaning a hundred, sair meaning poets, me liye hai, together. If you get a hundred poets together, you gather them together, tel na puja vihroi, that still they could not even describe a til amount right if you if you imagine a seed a til is a very 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 small fraction of that seed that still if you were to get a hundred poets together that you could not even describe that tiny tiny amount then Gunanik Devji Maharaj go on to say that why Guruji's praise cannot be done and why Guruji's hukam cannot be described even if you take all the vegetation in the world right all the vegetation, all the trees, all the, all the bushes, the Amazon rainforest, if you take all of it and you create and you make pens, right? If you take all the oceans, all the water from all the oceans in the world and you, and you make ink, you take the greatest writer that you can find who can write at the, at the speed of the wind, still you cannot describe why Guruji's hukam, hukam na jai. Then the second line, Maharaj say, Hukami ho vanijiya, hukam melevadiyai. That hukami, Vaiguruji's command, hoven, created, ji, beings. That Vaiguruji created beings, right? Created us, created animals, stones, plants, leaves, the lot. Hukam melevadiyai, Vaiguruji's hukam, mele, receive, vadiyai, greatness. That only through Vaiguruji's hukam, command, can we obtain this, this greatness? So if we take the example of a baby in its mother's womb, so the deve and the development of the baby into a fetus, within, within six months, the fetus um, begins to develop its limbs, begins to develop its features, and this all lies within Vaigruji's hukam. And then the protection that the baby gets in his mother's womb, again, is in Vaigruji's hukam, it's in Vaigruji's control. Because when a baby is in its mother's womb, it can remember its last 100 lives, right? What it did, what it didn't do, um, its good deeds, its bad deeds, its family members, its friends, it can remember it all. And the baby meditates because of the heat and the pain of the womb. And Vaigruji gives it that protection, right? Not only by saving it, it gives him the protection, then Vaigruji gives the baby that vidyai when the baby is born. Because through being born and given this manukha janam, this, this human form, it's given, it's we are given our opportunity, right? To fulfill our purpose in life. That we can, in this janam, in this body, we are able to do seva, simran, read Gurbani, and meet with Vaiguru. And then hukami hovanji, if we take on to, to animals, so we've spoken about babies, if we take on to animals. So often we hear, that you know, these new species are made um, and found. Uh, I actually heard on the news a few days ago that the scientists had found, um, I think, a colony of emperor penguins, and they were really, really excited about it. And 
how animals have these different characteristics, they have all these features, adaptations, they all are within Waigurujis Hukum. So I was looking into um, some kind of funky ones that I could find, and I thought I'd share them with you. So a garden snail has 14,000 teeth, right? Makes it sound quite vicious when you put it like that. And then a mayfly only has a lifespan of 24, 24 hours. So again, Waigurujis Hukum that it's only given 24 hours to live. Male seahorses carry and give birth to baby seahorses, right? The only male species animal that has to go through the pain of birth. Hummingbirds can fly backwards. The only bird that can fly backwards. So Guru Sahib Ji again has given it this feature. And then the giant Pacific octopus has three hearts, nine brains and blue blood, right? So it just goes to show that how vast Vaiguruji's creation is, right? Hukumi Hovani Jiya. Then the next line, Hukumi Uttamani Ja Hukum Lik Duk Sukhpayah. So Hukumi Vaiguruji's command, Uttam high, Nich low, that through Vaiguruji's Hukum, we can obtain this high status and we can obtain this low status, right? So we can become quite very high in the eyes of Vahiguru and we can become very low in the eyes of Vahiguru. And then, Hukam Lik Duk Sukhpai Yeh, that Hukam, Vaiguruji's command, Lik, written, Duk, pain, Suk, pleasure, Pai Yeh, obtain. That through Vaiguruji's command, we can obtain pain and pleasure. So if we take those two, those two words from the line before, Uttam and Nich, right? So a lot of the time, we associate Uttam with Suk. So if we do Uttam Karam, if we do if we do good deeds, we will obtain suk, which is pleasure. And then nich, if we do nich karam, if we do nive karam, we will obtain duk, pain, right? So this is the norm, what we think is the norm. But often a question comes when, when we look at good deeds, suk, bad deeds, duk. Does anyone know sometimes what question might come from this? Yeah, yeah. So why do, you, why do you, so Benji said that you could be doing good deeds and still be dukkhi. So why can, why do those that do good deeds receive duk, right? So basically this, why does this happen? But we have this kind of view of seeing duk as a bad thing that we see as negative. But actually duk can sometimes be quite positive. I know it's described as pain, but it can be a, a positive thing as well. So if we take an analogy that I like to remind myself of is that of Guru Sahib Ji. And imagine Guru Sahib Ji surrounded by five dogs, right? And we can refer to those dogs as calm, lust, grod, anger, lobe, greed, uh, calm, grod, lobe, more um, attachment and hunkar, pride, right? And as we try to get closer to Guru Sahib Ji, who, which, who's in the middle, those dogs will bark louder, right? And as the further away we are from Guru Sahib Ji, so we could be miles and miles away from Guru Sahib Ji, and the dogs won't bark. Meaning that the closer we get to Guru Sahib Ji, though we are feeling this duk and receiving this duk, it can actually be a blessing. And it might sometimes just be a test from Guru Sahib Ji. The next line, ikna hukmi bakseis, ik hukmi sada pavayeh. So ikna, some hukmi, Vaiguruji's command, bakseis, blessed. So some through Vaiguruji's command are blessed, and ik, some hukmi, Vaiguruji's command, sada forever pavayeh wonder. And through Vaiguruji's command, some will forever wonder. So through the the life cycle of birth and death, birth and death. And a sake that illustrates this is that of the two friends that lived in the village, right? So Gunan Dev Ji and Pai Mardana Ji went to, to visit them in this village. And friend number one said to friend number two that, you know, he heard that Gunan Dev Ji was in town, that we should go and see Gunan Dev Ji Maharaj. And both agreed and told their wives that they would be doing this. Their wives gave them some money to give to Gunan Dev Ji Maharaj as offering so they could receive blessings. And both started making the way to Gunan Dev Ji Maharaj. On the way, friend number two stopped off and decided that actually the money that his wife had given him, he was going to spend it on smoking, on drinking, 
on just just having a good time with his friends. Whereas friend number one continued and he went to see Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj, sat in their Sangat, meditated, listened to their teachings. And this continued for a few days, it continued, continued, continued. And one day when both friends were returning, friend number one got an injury. So he got a thorn in the foot, right? And friend number two, simultaneously, more or less at the same time, um, found this pot of gold, right? This, uh, this pot, it had pieces of coal in it and had a gold coin in it. And friend number one was, was, was confused, I guess annoyed that, you know, I do all these, these good deeds, I spend my time with Gunan Dev Ji Maharaj, but I've just, I've just been injured. Whereas my friend who, you know, does the drinking and the smoking, he's just found a, a gold coin. So, you know, how, do, how does this work? So both go to Gunan Dev Ji Maharaj to ask them, you know, what, what's going on here? And when they go to Guru Sahib Ji, Guru Sahib Ji explained that actually friend number one was supposed to lose the whole of his leg. But because of the good deeds he did, because of um, the Saad Sangat and the meditation he did, he actually reduced that, that punishment, that garam, to just a thorn in the foot. Whereas friend number two, he was actually supposed to get a um, the pot was supposed to be full of gold coins but every time he was doing these bad deeds those gold coins turned into coal leaving him with just 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 one gold coin and then if we link that back to the uttam and the niche that we spoke about that actually friend number one was doing these these uttam karam right and he received a duk duk on the outside but actually it was it was much it was a duk on a, on a much smaller scale and then niche Right friend number two was doing these nive karm and it looked like he was receiving sukh but the sukh he received was on a much smaller scale as well. Then Gurnani Dev Ji Maharaj is going to say hukme andar sab ko bahar hukm na koe that hukme why Guru Ji's command andar within sab all ko a that everyone we are all within why Guru Ji's command bahar hukm na koe that outside hukam, Vaiguruji's command, na, kana, koe, no one. That no one can be outside of Vaiguruji's command. And a sake that illustrates this is that of Brichita Raja. So, Brichita Raja uh, was a good Raja, was an honest man, and he met with Galjug. Galjug um, is a, was a dark age. Galjug took on a form and met with Brichita Raja. And Parichita Raja and Galjug had this conversation. And Parichita Raja said to Galjug that you cannot be here, you need to leave. And Galjug said, I, I can't do that because my reign, my Raj, my rule is much longer than yours. It's actually 432,000 years long, right? So then Parichita Raja and Galjug, they came to an agreement where Parichita Raja told Galjug, there's four places that you cannot enter. One, somewhere, somewhere was, um, a place where someone drops nam. Second, a place of charity. Third, a place of sadsangat. And fourth, a place of righteousness, right? And then Preacher Raja also said that there's four places that you can enter. One, the first being a place of lust, calm. The second being a place of drinking. Third being a place of violence. And fourth being a place of gambling. And Galjuk turned around and said to Parishita Raja that the four places that you've allowed me to enter, they're all bad, right? Give me one place. Give me one good place where I can enter. And then Parishita Raja said that the one good place that you can enter is a place where there's gold, okay? So the sucking continues and Parishita Raja um, goes hunting, hunting for a deer. But what Parishita Raja forgets and doesn't realize that day when he goes hunting, that he's wearing his gold crown. So does anyone know what this might mean? That he's gone hunting and he's wearing his gold crown. Yeah, Kaljug. So gold is one of the places where Kaljug could go, right? The dark age. And if we imagine the dark age as the five vices, right? Gam, Grod, Lo, Mohankar. The anger, greed, um, attachment, pride and lust, right? So... Brichat Raja was wearing this crown when he went out, so actually he could be influenced through by Galjug. So the Saki continues, and uh, Brichat Raja he um, tries to 
um, chase this deer, but loses the deer, and then tries to go f find the deer, and in the jungle or the forest, he comes across this saint. And the saint is sitting in samadhi, in meditation, deep meditation, and Brichataraja asks the saint, um, did, you see where, did you see where the deer went? And because he's in deep meditation, the, um, the saint doesn't reply, and Brichataraja actually gets really annoyed and really angry, and um, says that look at to the saint that look at this this fake person pretending to meditate and he got so angry that he put uh, a dead snake around the saint's neck right tied a, a dead snake around the neck of the of the saint and then returned home and upon returning home Brichitraja took off his crown and immediately realized what he'd done so again what had happened is everyone following what, what had happened? He came home, he took his crown off and realized what he'd done. Yeah, so when he took, he took off the crown and he, he basically took Galjog off, right? He realized that actually I've done something really quite bad because when he did that, when he said those things about the saint and he put the snake around the saint's neck he was actually under the influence of Galjuk. then the saints um the saint obviously was still in the jungle and the saint's student came to see him and the student was quite spiritual anything the student would say would would come true and the student saw what the, what had been done to his teacher to his guru and he cursed Brichitraja and said that whoever has done this to my to my teacher he will be he will be bitten by a snake in seven days and he'll, he'll die from from that bite and the saint wakes up comes out of his meditation and the teacher explains what's happened um sorry the student explains to his teacher what's happened and the teacher says what have you done because Brichit Raja is, is a good man right he's an honest he's an honest king that why have you cursed him and then the student asked that well if he's such a great man if he's such an honest man then why did he do this to you and the saint's answer was what we've spoken about that he was under the influence of Galjuk. that's why he did this and the saint tells the student that you need to go and warn Brichitraja that he's got seven days to to save his life which is what the what the student does and in an attempt to save his life Brichitraja builds this glass building on Ganga, the river, right? So in the middle of the water, he decides that he, he, he builds this glass building, he gets army on, and he gets armies on all four corners, right? And meanwhile, a snake named Tachaknag begins making his way towards Brichitraja, the snake that would supposedly kill Brichitraja on the seventh day. And whilst making his way to Brichitraja, he comes across a doctor in the forest and they, they converse, they, they, they have some contact and um, the doctor explains that Brichitraja has asked for me and um, this doctor, he actually specialised in uh, snake bites so Brichitraja had asked for this doctor to come into his kingdom, to come into the glass building just in case there was any, you know, anything to happen so Brichitraja made every attempt possible to try and save his life so ironically, the snake killed this doctor that was, um, you know, a master of snake bites and then continued making his way to Prichitraja. On the seventh day, he arrived at the building, saw that Prichitraja has made this glass building. There's armies on all four corners and the snake was wondering, how do I enter, right? How do I get to Prichitraja? And over the seven day, course there was gatha happening and on the seventh day was the borg of the gatha so the end of the gatha and on the end of the gatha Brichitraja had ordered a basket of flowers um in kind of in celebration of the end of the gatha and i guess he he allowed for the flowers to enter this this glass building because it was a seventh seventh day and he might have thought actually you know i've not been killed so the chiknag takes upon the form of an ant and he sits in this basket of flowers and he goes into this, this glass building. And then when the borg of the gutter happens, the gutter ends, Brichitraja takes one of the flowers from the basket, he smells it and he puts it to his forehead. And at that point, the Chaknag turns back into his form of a snake and he bites Brichitraja, killing him on the seventh day. Right? 
So that just goes to show that you can have armies on all four corners, right? But if you're going to die, you're going to die. And Gurajan Dev Ji Maharaj say about this, Hovant agya pagwan purka hai, nanak kiti saas agar khate. That when death comes calling, when Vaiguruji's hukam comes calling, that even an ant can take the breaths out of the most powerful of people. And then finally, Gurnani Dev Ji Maharaj say that Nanak hukme je bujja ta homme kahe na koe. That Nanak Guru Sahib hukme Vaiguruji's command je hu bujja understands. That those that understand Vaiguruji's command, Guru Sahib Ji say that those that understand Vaiguruji's command ta homme kahe na koe. Ta then homme ego kahe speak. No, cannot, go no one. That then our ego cannot speak out, right? We cannot act out in ego. So if you put this together, Guru Sahib Ji say that those that understand why Guruji's hukam cannot act out in ego. And that's what Preacher Taraja did, right? That he got so annoyed and his ego took this hit that I just asked this saint a question of where this deer, where, where has the deer gone? And he, did not, he didn't reply to me, right? And then he obviously cursed the the saint and he put you know put this snake around the the saint's neck right in in an act of ego so if maharaj is saying that if we understand why guruji's hukam then our ego cannot speak out then that's exactly what we've been through today so if we link it back and we actually understand that the body we've been to, through today and how that helps us to not act out in ego helps us destroy our ego, helps us quieten, helps us quieten our ego. So if we if we think that actually hukumi hoven our God, hukum na kahe ajai, that why Guruji made everything, they created everything. And the next time we pick something up, we won't act out in ego because we'll understand that actually this this isn't mine. I don't own this. Why Guruji gave me this? And then we say that hukumi hoven ji hukumi leverdi that why Guruji made beings, they they give beings their vidi They're in control of birth and death right they give us this this life they can take this life away from us and then we won't we won't speak out in ego because we have no control over that and if we link it back to hukumi uttam neej hukum lik duk sukh paye that vaiguruji gives us the sukh we have right the pain and the pleasure it's all in vaiguruji's hukum right then our ego won't speak out ikna hukumi baksees ik hukumi sada pavaye hai that vaiguruji bless us and why Guruji causes us to sometimes wander and be lost. If we link it back to the Saki we went through, where friend number one was was blessed and friend number two was was actually wandering aimlessly. Right? So we won't act out in ego if we can understand that. Hukame under sabako bahar hukum na koe. That we cannot control this hukum, right? We are we are within this hukum. Right? We can't escape it. The same way Prichataraja could not could not escape the hukum of death, right? If we can understand this, then we won't act out in ego. And this this topic of hukum that Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj have given us, it's so, so important. That's why Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj put it at the start, at the beginning of Japji Sahib, at the beginning of Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj, to help us understand the rest of Guru Bani. That, for example, if, if we start a new subject in school, the teacher will come to us and say, you know, this topic is a fundamental, fundamental topic that you need to learn, you need to understand, and then it will help you understand the rest of the subject. And at first, we might not understand it. You know, the first few lessons, we might not understand what the topic is saying. But the more we re revisit it, the more we refresh it, the more we revise it, actually, it will start making sense, right? And the same way, the more time we spend with Gurbani, the more time we spend trying to understand what our Guru is saying to us, the, the better our understanding will be. And then back onto Hukam versus free will, right? This, this, big, um, this big question that can Hukam and free will coexist? Is it one or the other? And what Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj's answer to this was, what the Saki that we can relate to this, is where four Gursikhs came to see Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj. And the Gursikh said to Guru Arjan Dev Ji, that Maharaj Ji, we are a bit confused, right? Some of, the th some of the things you say are a little bit contradictory because on one side you're saying, 
Jesa be Jesu lune karam eho khet. That whatever we plant, we will harvest. Whatever actions we do, those are the ones that have a reaction, right? But at the same time, you're saying, Mare rakhe eko aap maan ko ke kich na hi haat. Right? Ke mare rakhe that our death and rakhe our protection, Vaiguruji controls that. Maan ko ke kich na hi haat, that the human has, has no control over this. So which one is it, right? It can't be both. And Guru Arjan Dev Ji Maharaj answered this by saying, it's dependent on what level you're on, right? Your avastha, your spiritual level, your spiritual state. So if you're on at level one, right? This is the level of Garam. This is where you agree with or you live by Jaisa bi Jaisolune Garam Eho Khed. So you're making these deals with Vaheguru Ji that if I do good, I get good. If I do bad, I get bad, right? So you're making these deals. Then when your spiritual state level begins to increase and you begin worship of Vaheguru Ji, then you reach level two. And you believe that actually I'm not responsible, why Guruji is responsible, right? It's all within hukam, right? And then the Maharaj said, then when you, when you continue on your spiritual journey and you reach level three, the level of gyanta, of knowledge, then you believe in that there is only Vaheguru. Right, it's only, there is only that one. And the difference between level two and level three here, because this is it's quite a difficult concept to get your head around. The difference between level two and level three here is level two, you're saying that Vaiguru is responsible. But if Vaiguru Ji is responsible, then you've got that separation, right? Because then there's still, there's a Vaiguru and there's a you. There's that separation, there's that duality. But if we, the level, level three is, is that there's only Waheguru, right? There's only that one. And that's what Sikhi is about, oneness. There's no duality. There's no difference between us and that Waheguru. So in summary, in level one, we are saying that actually we have control, right? So we, we believe we are in that kind of free will state. On level two, we believe that Waheguru Ji has control, right? That it's, it's hukam, everything is hukam. But then, in, in level three, the level that we should aspire to get to is that it's just, it's just them. There's nothing else. It's just Vaheguru, oneness. So that answers these questions here, right? Can hukam and free will coexist? Is everything we do controlled by God? Do we have free will? So the answer is yes to a degree, but it's very much dependent on what level we are at. Right? The level we are at depends on whether we have this free will or we have this or if or if this hukam. And the question of can hukam change can hukam change, that is we answered that during the Saki of the two friends, where he got his his hukam the um his injury changed from the loss of his leg to just a thorn in the foot. And friend number two actually received one gold coin instead of a pot of gold. So just to recap what we've been through today, we've been through the greatness of Sidi Japji Sahib, um, the Sakya Muksar Sahib of how we can obtain liberation through reading Japji Sahib. Then what is hukum and how big is hukum, right? Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj's answer to the, these two questions that the Sids asked, that what is hukum and how big is hukum in the second body of Sidi Japji Sahib. Then accepting hukum through this, through Maharaj's teachings, and therefore quietening our ego. And finally, we went through Hukam versus free will and the Saki of when the Guru Sikhs came to Guru, Guru Arjun Dev Ji Maharaj. So finally, just to finish, um, obviously the discussions that the Sids had with Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj, through the, the discussions the Sids had with Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj, they were blessed, they were liberated, as was anyone else that was fortunate enough to meet with Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj. And after hearing this body of hukam, the, the, the Sids, they asked, they asked another question, another quite interesting question, which we will cover next week. Bhai Rohanveer Singh will go through it next week. So please tune in at 7.15. And finally, um, I just wanted to 
if in I mean we haven't got Girtan this evening, but I wanted to just go through this Shabbat together, where we sing it together, because often people uh, people say that you know if they do they connect better with Why Guru Simran than they do with with Girtan. I know Bai Guru Jana Singh said last week that if there's a certain Bhangati or a certain line in Guru Granth Sahib Jai that you can connect with, then definitely meditate on it and connect to that. But because we've been through the earth, the meanings today. We, sh we, we can try and sing it together and see if we can kind of contemplate on what Guru Sahib Ji is saying and, and make that connection. Because pa though people, some people say that parroting Gur Gurbani is, is, we shouldn't do it, but that's completely wrong because Gurbani will have an effect on us either way. It will always have a positive effect on us. So if I could just, just ask everyone just to, just to close your eyes and then we'll just go through line by line um, and just sing it together and then after that. It will be, it will be the end of the talk. Hukami ho van akar Hukam na kahe ajai Hukami ho van akar Hukami ho van jiyya Hukam mila vade aai Hukami ho van Hukmi o tam nicha Hukam lekh dukh sukh paaya O tam nicha Ek na hukmi bakhsi sa Ek hukmi sada pavaya Bakhsi sa Hukam andar sab ko Hukam andar sab ko Hukam andar sab Bahar hukam na koe Bahar hukam na koe Bahar Nanak hukam je bujata Hum kah na koe Nanak hukam Nanak hukam je bujata Hum kah na koe Nanak Vahe Guru Vahe Guru Vahe 
वाहे गुरु 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 जी का खालसा वाहे गुरु जी की फतेह um does have anyone have any questions at all Okay. Just going to ask. So when you're talking about all the different levels, where is it that we take accountability for our actions if we're saying we're one with why guru we are why guru? Hmm. So in essence, we're making a mistake. Do you, do you kind of if i'm making a mistake but actually our end goal is to be one with wahiguru mm. and i know that takes spiritual work and all of that to get there mm. but at what point are we making mistakes and saying we done the wrong step we made that mistake if it's within hukum okay so again if we th- if we look at the the third level right and obviously that kind of means that we have that separation again that duality that why guru ji is is something and we are something else right obviously there should still be accountability that we obviously don't go around you know shooting people or you know robbing banks and things like that that we should have that accountability for ourselves right but as we kind of go up these the the, the spiritual steps then automatically the, the accountability will be there right where actually when we get to the the level 3 right the goal the the gyanta that we will have that accountability ourselves right i hope that makes sense i think sukdeep singh might be able to add to that why does a uh, vai guru test us then so going back to the analogy of the dogs and vai guru ji is actually if if we look at that right and if we look at the dogs as testing us then as we're getting closer to vai guruji we are getting tested more right so it actually means that we might actually be closer to vai guruji that we are getting tested and we are getting this duk does that make sense is it because of our karm that we get tested or is it because it's just hukum that we will get tested no 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 it is to do with our karm so the saki with the two friends the he was supposed to lose his leg because of his his previous karm right his predestined karm so what he done in his last life and similarly his friend was supposed to get the the pot of gold because again of his karm right but then that changed because of the 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 actions the good deeds that they done in this life so it is related to our karm but again it's the whole point that we we sh- obviously if it is painful it's painful i'm not preaching that you know when i get 
when I get hurt or I get duck in my life that I take, I'm like, you know, I treat it the same as duck. I'm not saying that at all. Because when we lose a family member or friend, it is very painful. But often where we can, we should try and look at that, that duck, that pain as a test from Guru Sahib Ji. That actually Guru Sahib Ji is testing us and Guru Sahib Ji actually have us quite close to them. There was a Saki or something, Sekhaneya, where... Um, uh, Thing, he actually said to Maya had come to his too close to him and she was dressed beautifully and he was he just closed his eyes and says no Vaikru take Maya away and it's it's crazy when you think about it that they done so much bhakti and they were still being tested at, even at that stage uh, Benji what was your question quickly again go <clears throat> just quickly so Benji's question about accountability right and how do you take accountability into account that's all right uh, because if we say things in Vaikuji's hukam how does it work right so if you look at the the levels what level are we at what would we say whatever we are first level so in that level See if you continue. This is the second time it's happened uh, in the Japji cycle. <clears throat> That's how you're talking? Can you hear me? Okay. So, we can't think about level 2 or level 3. We got the first level. We have the, so, we have to look at what level we are. So, if we're at the level of JSI, BJ, Soul, and Air, then we have to take responsibility. So, when it comes to accountability, at this level, it is accountability. The, the answer kind of stops there. Do you get it, right? So when we're saying the whole thing, God, it's all in God's hukum, la, 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 all that kind of stuff, right? We're not at that level yet. So we can't say that. Bears are wrong. Stealing's hmm. wrong. And we are at level one. Yeah. But I'm talking about if, let's just take someone had an affair and the woman knows it's wrong, the man knows it wrong, it's wrong. I've heard them say, oh, yeah, but it was meant to happen. That's why it's happened. But actually, we consciously know it's wrong. And they say, oh, it was written. Hmm. Hanji. But if we know it's wrong, this you can take steps to not steal. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that's what I'm saying. If, if our, I know our end goal is to merge and we are all Vahiguru. Hmm. And it takes a lot of work to get there. Hmm. But it's baby steps. But the thinking of we are Vahiguru and we're still doing something wrong. But it's okay. We don't have to. Yeah. And... Does that make that, sense? That makes so sense, Benji, but it, it makes sense, but again, it comes back to the same thing that we're speaking about things that we're not at yet. So it comes in Japji Sahib, Sona Galla Akaski Kita Aidi. So we hear about these very great Galla, these great talks, people say, oh, we're this, we're that. But Kita Aidi, so we start to copy them and we say, yeah, it is all in God's Bana, la, la. But do we truly understand that? I'm not saying it's wrong, but are we at that level two or level three yet? No, we said level one. So right now, the Guru has given us hands. We try and solve our own problems following the Guru's hukam. We, we, what the Guru is saying to us, simple stuff like Nam Japana. I know it sounds obvious, but when we start to do that, then we start to progress spiritually. Then we realize that maybe it is in God's hukam or we start to have that more acceptance. But the third stage, what um, Simon was talking about, is that we get to a stage where we realize actually th there's neither, there's only one. It's when we merge, right? But why not to answer the question simply, we have to take responsibility. Level one, responsibility. It's not to say hukum doesn't exist, but it's where we have to realize where are we in our own spiritual journey first. Then we can tackle the problem. If we don't know where we are, we have no idea where we're going. Why not we know that we're starting off and the Guru's told me to do this and don't do that. It's that simple. When we start getting the whole, you know, like hukum this, hukum that, I'm not saying it's wrong, but... We don't even understand that. We're just saying it because it's something probably our parents said to us. Level one, yeah, is more free, but I'm not. We're not saying level one is, yeah, there is hukum. But we're saying it's. Don't worry about the free will hukum things. We have to look at ourselves first. That right now we have to make an effort. We can't say right now that God's gonna bring me to the Godala. We know that we say that, but we have to make an effort and hope Guru Saji brings us. So it's about taking responsibility. That's the essence of the answer. When it comes to tests, it's, it's hard, right? We all get tests and it's hard to kind of empathize all the times. 
One way we can look at it is in Japji Sahib again, the, the last body of Japji Sahib, Jat Bahara Tirad Suniyar. Like what was said in the talk, was said really well, is that straight away we look at everything as negative. But if we look at our, our Guru as Dialu, Kirpalu, as compassionate and always giving and taking care of us, that situation we feel my Guru is doing something right now to make me better. They are making me pure. They're putting these things in front of me to make me to die. What is it called? 36 carat? What's that gold thing? The best type of gold in it. Tell me the purest of the pure. And when you want to make gold pure, what do you have to do? Look at everyone laughing at me. Do my own bestie, right? Whoever it is. No one's even told me the answer. Who's giving me the answer? I was close. Multiplication of 36, 24. But the point here is that to get pure gold, it has to go for a process. A very, very difficult process. And it becomes pure. Baba Harnam Singh Saki, again at all levels, but Baba Ji showing us, in, uh, my Sharda, they're Pura Mahapurush, right? They're already there, but their Jeevani shows us that it doesn't matter how far you get on the path, you can fall at any time, right? Obviously, we would say they wouldn't fall, they became one with Brahm, but they're teaching us a lesson don't get Hankari, it's, it's never too late, right? The Guru always puts us through. Tests, but we look at tests as a negative thing, but the Guru is with us. They've given us the tools. So we focus on the negative stuff, that the test, but what about all the tools they've given us to get through the test? Why? Right? So it's our drishti, it's the way we look at situations. And as long as we stay in these circles, Maharaj Kirpa Karan, they take care of us. Very famous saying by Pai Jagrar Singh, if good things only happen to good people and bad things only happen to bad people, just ponder upon that and you'll, you'll get it, right? Look in the Guru's life. The Guru had so much duk. We all have duk. The Guru had a lot of duk in a worldly sense. But what was the Guru's state? That's the, that's the thing. That's what the Guru's trying to get us to. That you get to this level, I'm going to make you into this. Right? Like when they're sitting in Machivar in the jungles, you all probably know the story. Lost their family, home, everything. What did they say to Vai Guruji? Tudh bin Rogar Jai the Odin. Say, hey Vai Guruji, without you, if I had a Rajai right now in the jungles, that would still be a disease. How do we take that in our lives? Every night before we go to bed, do your Sohela side. Right? So, every Sikhi, everything's here in the Guru's home. The more we keep delving in, all these answers, all these questions will answer themselves. Yes, bro. Last question, we're going to do Samapti. Sorry, it's a... Uh, yeah, so, Paji, I'm um, speaking about uh, accountability, for example. Mm. Uh, Guru Sahib tells us about the word home. I'm breaking that down. Like, obviously, home broken down means me, me, hana. Ho and me. Mm. So, me, me thinking. And uh, Guru Sahib says that our state of mind is stuck in this home, mm. right? So, that if we end up believing, if we, if we correlate that to our lives, right, that everything belongs to me, and that is our narrative, like my family, my parents, my belongings, my things, my education, my future, my passions, my problems, everything, right? Me, 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 me. So if we're constantly thinking, and obviously we have to take accountability for those things which you have said belong to you. Does that make sense? Makes, and, um, makes sense. But if we start believing that God is the great giver, he's given us everything, he's given us our parents, everything from zero to 100, everything, right? The whole spectrum. Then can accountability even exist at that level? Do you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? You lost me there. <laughs> I would say, okay, cool, I'll repeat it again. So, um, the, maybe we, don't tell me the whole list again, though. Just one example. All right, so if we're saying. You didn't go to Chad and sing last week, you tell me that my, <laughs> my taps are clean. I'm not clean and stuff, innit? Yeah. Hanji. Yeah. Sorry, go to Chad. Uh, so, your body, so if we see God as the great giver who has given us each and everything we have in our life, yeah. this mind, this body, everything, right? Yeah. Then can we still think in our home, mate, after that point, if you truly believe that God is the great giver, then then, then can accountability even exist at that point? But the thing is that, so your question, I'll, I'll spin it back on you if you understand what you're saying. Mm. But like, if you, until we're at that level, we wouldn't know. So we wouldn't have that kind of, then we wouldn't have, you get what I mean? That we'd have to be at that stage. So that's the goal, right? So that's the goal. God on that level that he has given us everything, that nothing actually belongs to us, that yeah. he is the great giver. Because right now we say it, but do we really mean it? That's true. There that's you true. go. So you Very have true. to get to level, bro. 100%. That's it. Yeah. So when you get there, tell me the cheat codes. And let me get there, codes, and and me get there as well, yeah? <laughs> Hook a brother up, as they say. Maharaj Kirpa Karan. Chalo ji, I think we should finish off there. It's been very nice. Thank you so much. Before everyone starts running off, because I know everyone wants to go home. Everybody wants to go home, but just understand this. Your time you spend here, you know, I promise you, Guru Kirpa Karan, that your week will be better. So just stay for a bit longer. 
we're going to do some of the, now we're going to finish the program, we're going to have Ardas, uh, and then we have Sukhas in this area, we're all going to go with Guru Sahib Sach Khand. Right, let's all go with Guru Sahib Sach Khand, and then Guru Sahib will solve all our affairs for the week. Guru Sahib Ji okay? So I'll pass it over to the Big Bear to do the same, we'll do Sulok together, then we'll do Ardas, it'll be quick, we're done in 10 minutes, in and out, Guru Kedu Pakar, okay? So let's do Sulok together, and then we'll do Ardas, Hukunama, Sukhasan, and then um, go with Guru Sahib Sach Khand.